Oh. Alice, you have your finger on the pulse. You know, you've been in the media for a long time. You was my producer on the radio here. We had lots of very inappropriate conversations. Uh, what do you think about this whole situation? I think the other shoe hasn't even fallen yet, you know. Mm -hmm. Like this is about to get that's I feel oh, like that's I why they let they they locked his up because they don't want him tampering with it, whatever is out there. Because I think there's more. I think this is going to be a long 2025 coming up. But, like, but you hmm. got to say this. You got to know this. Yeah. The federalities, meet me how we used to affectionately call them back in the 90s. They have a 97% conviction rate. Mm. They don't make moves until they know they have a Trump type, no pun intended, case. They don't usually like put that out there until they, they they don't let you they let you play in their face for a long time yes. and then they go they, they this wait is true. this is true this yeah. is true they just so just beat google what they just beat google in court with all the money in the world so the feds when, the feds uh -huh. so i'm just saying anybody's keeping up with that i know that's like way back in page 15 but Google just lost a, a, a landmark decision against the government. When the government is on that, man. They don't lose. So he called Kalina, apparently, Diddy called Kalina 54 times in the Southern District of New York has those taped calls. I, Mimi, you know that I have a Diddy story from back in the day when he was like blowing me up about a picture that was posted on social media to a, a blog mm -hmm. and he was <laughs> mad at me. It's my only time talking to him on the phone. He blew me up like 57 times in one day and it was like, it went from highs to lows. I, it's the only time I ever talked to him on the phone. He was cussing me out because a picture we took at the BT Awards ended up on a blog that someone took up my MySpace page. So I know he does get like manic like that where he just goes, what, what can you say? I know you've been around him. I, I might ask you to, you know, trash him. But what can um, you say about his personality about, you know, how he's going to be on it? Like, he ain't he letting that ass go. Has, when it comes to something that he wants to get across, he has no, he won't stop. And I think that's where Can't Stop, Won't Stop came from. He will not stop. He will, if he's trying to get in touch with you, he will. He will do that. He's going to get in with you. So he's very, he's a relentless human being. I will say that. So I, hmm. I, I yes, the, 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 the multiple calls, I, I understand. Do you feel bad for Jimmy? So Mimi? Mimi, do you feel bad for Jimmy? I love the silence. I love it. Keep eating, Mimi. Keep eating. Bad? Real quick, though, before she answers that, don't answer that. Don't answer that. Mimi, real quick. Would you do chewing ASMR? Like, would you? Like, somebody gave you a bag and just hear you chew? Because you chewing, like... Absolutely. I, I would chew the We <laughs> are going to find you a chewing bag. Like, we're going to find this. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I love this. I, I don't... Am I crazy? People that's chewing is, like, something about, you, you know... Sometimes like I get grossed out, but then sometimes people do it right. I don't mind chewing. It's the slurping the and the sucking smacking. and the yeah. smacking and the the moaning. Like, why are you mm. why are you moaning while you eat? Like that so was you would not have been good at a Diddy freak off party. <laughs> I, I would, <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Take it. We have a Hold comment up. from Jerome, Jerome Trammell, who was a producer on Fox Soul, so let me go ahead and read it. He said, blowing up Kid Cudi's car for talking to Cassie, no wonder why so many people have kept silent. That's crazy. That's crazy. What are y'all thoughts? Do you think a lot of people were just so scared all these years, and that's why no one said anything, and then once Cassie kicked that door open, it kind of gave that people opened confidence. Up floodgates. Yeah. Definitely. I used to I used to hear stories, at least on my end and like on the radio side, I would just hear, you know, artists come up, they just kind of talk and and there was definitely a disconnect between people, how they view Diddy, especially at his height, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and 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 then people that actually knew Diddy as far as like, you know, look, it's well documented. Dude has anger issues, you know, um he's prone, he's been you know, look, I ain't snitching. Hey, prone to violence. Look at Steve Stout. You know, man got a lot of money out of Diddy because of that. You know, wait, that the incident. Steve Stout thing allegedly was 
Diddy allegedly holding him by his feet on the side of a outside of a building, right? Isn't that true? No, that was a it was a bottle involved. Well, the word was he beat him, got it, went into the offices and beat him with a with a bottle. Got it. Allegedly. So this is all alleged. Allegedly, wasn't it stories? Maybe we we talked, we heard about him doing that with a woman. Oh, he, now I ain't heard that one. Now that's new. Allegedly. So, yeah, we might have to throw that on there. We have to say it. T Tasha. Okay, now back to um this case. Tasha now, Jordan. <laughs> first of all, do not compare me to that <laughs> scallywag. Um, okay. <laughs> I like that I have this plot. I could just say whatever I want now. There you go. Okay, so Diddy's lawyers proposed a fifty million dollar bail package so he can stay out of jail until you know leading up to the trial. He was like, I, I don't want to go into trial into jail until you know I don't want to wait in jail until the trial. The fifty million dollar bail package uh, included fifty million dollar bond, co-signed by him, his mother, his sister, mother of his oldest daughter, which I'm like Sarah, the three adult mm -hmm. sons. Uh, his home on Star Island, which is worth $48 million. He paid off the remaining $16 million, so we can have that for a bond. His mother's home in Miami. Uh, they also restricted travel to only, this is what he proposed, uh, Florida and New York. So we can go back and forth mm -hmm. to court and go to doctor's appointments because you know, I'm sure he got to get some things checked. And he already surrendered his passport April 1st of 2024. Also, his kids' passports have been surrendered. This is, um, and, and and will be surrendered. Janice Combs, his mother, his daughter Chance, Jesse, Delilah Combs, and the baby loves. Baby ain't really got to see the world yet, and the passport has already been surrendered. Diddy, you don't take That's, you take anybody out with this. The baby got it too. Look at that baby. This is very unfortunate. I, I'm I'm for his kids. Oh yeah. Um, this is very unfortunate because this it's, puff was like black excellence and for it to t turn out the way it did for his life to have gone from where it was to now is insane however let me say this the uh -huh. way america prosecutes black men versus non-black men <laughs> is incredible to me because you could have a non-black man do the same thing and worse and they're walking around mm -hmm. scot-free make it make sense make it make sense true you can know. but that still don't make me mm -hmm. want him to be off because his victims are all black people well i th think they locked up jeffrey epstein I think if I I gotta go look yeah. that up. Somebody brought that up. Yeah, he, yeah. Uh, he they like, locked like I don't think that like, during the trial I think they kept him in jail as well. You know what I'm That's saying? That's one so, you, out of how many? Yeah. One out of how, how many? Yeah, had, had a lot of baby oil situations too. I, I'm just comparing the two baby oil. You know, it's like a baby <laughs> he oil. Had a lot of babies. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of. <laughs> Listen, yeah, you 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 have of course you have. A, 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 an argument in that and you're right it's true yeah. they definitely go after they're definitely more corrupt and difficult and on point on on black men you know when they when they commit a crime and that's true and, and black oh, 1000 percent um i mean when black men i mean when white men with evidence it's like slap on the hand a few months probation even sometimes they oh we don't want to ruin their life and with a black man a lot of times just a mere uh story an allegation on you will will ruin your life that is true but yeah. with this case with cases that there's extreme history of decades and decades and decades and decades of stories allegations evidence i don't feel bad for black men that commit crimes against black people i do not black women especially the most disrespected person in the universe you know what i mean like and when it when when, when it comes to that i'm like nope sorry don't care I because I don't we think all that know for any story. man that commits a crime against anybody, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, it doesn't matter. If you committed a crime, then you should, justice should be done, period. That's just the bottom let, line. Let me introduce this to y'all, see what y'all think about it, because it's interesting y'all are saying this. And then I'm thinking also, like, would they have done this if the video didn't uh, come out? Cause I'll, I'm thinking back to Ray Rice situation. Right. I don't know if y'all remember Ray yeah, Rice, former running player. back for the Ravens. 
Uh, I don't know if you remember how things progressed through that story. At first, he wasn't suspended because the, the video hadn't gone out right. yet. They heard, the NFL heard about it, the media, they talked about it, but it wasn't like this firestorm until that video hit and then it was it was different. Now the whole world was coming down on them, which is, look, hey, it is what it is, right? But it seems like video now, like, look, look with the video cameras now, with the, 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 the police are wearing now, now we're, we're seeing like in real time, like, and being able to react in a way that we didn't used to yeah. back in the day. Because we would just hear about it and we were like, yeah, that's terrible. But, you know, seeing it, like seeing what he did to Cassie, I don't see that. Yeah, I'm not surprised they did what they did. Like that, that there, was you know. There was that the, the evidence was right there. There, there was really no getting out of that. Yeah. The whole world saw it with with their own eyes. Yeah. There was no wiggle room for him to get out of that. So, mm -hmm. do you think they would have let him get get? Gave him bond if they, that video doesn't come. Do you think it kind of changes this whole kind of? I don't say change the case, but the temperature on it. Like yes. I feel like, yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Listen, when it comes to black female women uh, victims, if there's not a video, it's like, well, you are the whore. What were you doing there? You're a liar. You're a gold digger. The only reason that Cassie's and the young girls in the R. Kelly case got any kind of justice is because it was a video. Because when it's not a video, we don't get believed. It's a it, it's an attack on the victim, always. And when it's a black woman against a black man, the woman's gonna get trashed. She's a slut, she's a whore. What were you doing there? Where were your parents? And we make mm -hmm. every excuse for the man, especially if he's one of our favorites. Let him make a good, good music, have a lot of touchdowns, score a lot of points on the court. Well, no, we know, those are our heroes. They're taking out black men. Now there is, a definite wave in America that definitely targets black men. And I want to be very clear about that. I 1000% acknowledge that. But I'm so sick of ignoring the victims because of our fandom and fanhood of these people. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I don't really feel bad for these people that have risen to these heights. Diddy, you got it out of the mud. Okay? You got it out of the mud. You became so successful. Yeah. You were the yeah. epitome of success and yes. wealth and excess. Even though we all know you did a lot of your protégés real bad, took all that money. No one else is doing as well as you. Like, you really took advantage of a lot of your artists. But you, for yourself, did a lot for you. You, you became very successful by ill-begotten ways, I might add, in my opinion. But you mm -hmm. did. And to see it all go away because you can't control your dick and your ass and your mouth. Okay? Your dick, your ass, and your mouth. And that's why we are here on this uh, Tuesday Eve talking about 1,000 bottles of lube and baby oil because you couldn't control your impulses. You couldn't control it. Why couldn't If it was like 12 bottles, we'd be like, okay, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's for the I whole year. I need to see the video, like I said. I yeah. want to see the 1,000 bottles. That, Please. The acronym, the acronym is DAM, if you didn't know. Dick. Well, Damn. Well, no one, again. but. Oh, then you put butt in there. Okay, Damn. Dick. Now, damn, boo. okay. I but guess look how they're still trying to blame Cassie. Oh, well, Cassie was cheating, and that's Jerome. Thank you for that. Cassie was cheating, and that's why she threw the phone at him, and that's why he beat her up. They're trying to make excuses. So, uh, Diddy's lawyer, you're doing your job. You're trying to get your client off and, and give him favor. But I'm sick of it. I'm sick of the victim blaming. I really, really am. Yes, Cassie did accept the settlement from him because if you think about it, a lot of stuff that I think things were out of the. Um, the statute of limitations. Is that right, Tals? You know that? Do you know about that? I don't think there's a statute of limitate. Well, look, the statute of limitations in the drug space. Um, there's no statutes when it comes to murder. I don't know about this area okay. here. Uh, somebody, somebody in the chat, go look that up real quick. Um, Shout out to Farrah but, Franklin in the chat. Beautiful Farrah Franklin. Hey, Farrah. Hey, Let me ask y'all this. What do you think May saw back in 1999? What did May... I will never forget. I moved to Atlanta to do radio in 90. I moved to Atlanta in 98. I'm working for, uh, at the time, uh, it was uh, Hot 97.5. I'm doing a remote on Clark Atlantic campus. I'll never forget this because it's like it sticks in my mind. For, it, it, like it was just seared because remember where, I think we all remember where Mace was, 97, 98. Like it was, it was like literally they were on top of the world. Then 99, I'm doing a remote. First of all, it's empty. I mean, I'm a jock, you know, ain't nobody showing up for me, right? That's just <laughs> empty. 
float. I'm just doing callbacks to this nation. And I see Mace dribbling a basketball on the yard, literally by himself. 1999, post all him leaving Puff. And I just remember me and some of the staff members we were just looking at We was like, our mouths was just open. Like, that's just, that, that's Mace. Like, that's Mason Betha. Like, like, what did he see that made him just say, nah, I mean, leave New York, came all the way to Atlanta, took, you know, started his ministry. I mean, what did May Mace see? That's pastor. what I want to know. Yeah. Who, who knows? Who knows? Unless you were there, you don't know. No. I, I would take a, a guess, a gander, a stab at the dock even, and say. Hey, she I fell for it, me. Amy, 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 she <laughs> fell for it. Go ahead. Tell, tell us, Ma. Tell us, Claudia. Walk right into that for us. Walk into it. Because my people will wait for me to get back on TV, so I'm talking. Okay? okay? I've been Mimi didn't too. fall for that. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, CJ. <laughs> the way Mace was at the top of his game and, like, he was killing it and then exited stage left. I think mm -hmm. Mace was shook to his core by what he saw that did not sit right with his spirit. And he, I, I think he suffered. I think he saw stuff, my opinion, Mace, and I'm not going in on you at all, Mace. I think you are a victim of whatever stuff that he was doing as far as like financial abuse with your contracts, bad business practices. Maybe you've seen some stuff like the violence. I don't know what you've seen. I, I don't want to put that out there, what you've seen. I'm assuming you did because for someone to just like leave at the height back then, but I love how Karma spins the block and now Mace is at the top of his game with a very, very popping podcast and does get to get the last laugh. Absolutely. Like Mace is killing it now. And I'm, yeah. I've am i always been a fan of Mace. I, I think he's, I met him once, yeah. very humble, very kind. And I don't know him to like ask him what happened. It's none of my, I can't ask him like that unless, you know. But I, I just feel like he's seen some things that, and good for him for getting out when he, like, a lot. Mm. In the chat, what do y'all think? What do y'all think? And what do y'all think oh, about J-Lo? Oh, oh, they, oh, they've been talking. They've been oh, they've been talking. They've been, oh, they been, talking, talking. Ooh, they been, they <laughs> been going in. Look, Claudia, 1,000%. They are in this chat room getting it in. Yes. Probably went through it. <laughs> J-Lo is quiet. What, do you think J-Lo has a responsibility to speak on this? Or do you think, hey, she could have possibly dated him and, you know, didn't really see much? Mimi, back in the night, when I first, first met you when we was in uh, Cancun. Cancun. Mm -hmm. We were mm -hmm. working with Stevie on the street team. That's when I first met him and me mm -hmm. and you first hung up for the first time. And I told you what I told you my opinion was of this relationship, oh, what I thought. And We're going we gonna to get there one day. I can't wait to this uh, story. We, we, we're going to get to this uh this inception story, you guys is a. Uh, I told yeah, Mimi back then. I know you're not a track star, but I need you to run. Yeah. Soon see that run in track on a relay when you're running. Yeah. The person behind you got the stick, yeah. and then yeah, they like, go and they go stick and they put it in your hand, Mimi. Before yeah. you got that long stick in your hand, you should have ran. You know, my daddy told me the same thing too. My daddy told me i was so excited oh my god daddy i met this guy you told your dad about him what your dad say yeah, he told me put my nikes on you didn't listen to he said, your daddy or your friend put my nikes on he said put your nikes on and it's tough it's tough up to tell a young lady that yo and when when all that look come on you know you know what time it was around that time it was it was lights camera action time them them was on top of the world world like World, world, world. Yeah, but when Mimi got him, Steve, was Stevie him. was on a, he was on a run, run. Yeah, when I met like, Stevie, he's on, he was on top of a speaker what? ripping his tank top off, playing the fuck part when I met him. Uh, yes, that's how I met mean, like Stevie. Okay. People, people, people forget. Like I know this new generation and all y'all looking yeah. at like, oh, damn, Stevie. I, no, Stevie J in the nineties was the hit maker of all hit makers. Like he was popping when she first met him. Absolutely. He was. Absolutely. And well, you know, yeah. what goes up <laughs> must must come down. Here we are. But but Mimi to me, me stronger for it. he did beat him, and that is sexy. That is attractive. That is fun. When someone's like tank top rock star vibes, he was giving rock star vibes with the yeah. 
Right. That's why I don't knock any like young when women are like young and, and, and they've been in those situations, it's hard for me to really like like you know, people people what they're saying about Cassie is like it's hard y'all 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 she's early twenties, like the world is the oyster, she's with the the biggest in the business, world icon. I mean the dude had already had two lifetimes in the business already by the time he met her. He was already in icon status. You know, so she was probably just super Super starry eyed. I mean, you know, my heart goes out. I mean, I know everybody wanna like, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but she but come on, man. Well y'all ever been twenty one before? That's true. Nineteen. Ooh, I wish I like, could go back and erase some people off my path that I thought was popping <laughs> back then. But, but yes. I'm saying it, but you gotta think, she was that age dating puff. Like yeah. that's that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> like that's it's a big Deal. That was a big deal for her. You know what I'm saying? That would that would have been a big deal for any twenty something year old. You know what I mean? Bro, so bro, bro, Ryan especially who wasn't in the business, she mm -hmm. wasn't like another entertainer. You know what I mean? She was just a a, a regular girl. She yeah. had a song out, but she wasn't like a super super duper star. So that mm -hmm. was a big deal for her. Yeah. So, yes. Should we take any questions from the chat? Yes. Yes. Slap that. that who says nah, I don't know if I could ask that <laughs> they said I wonder if Stevie is a I'm not asking that question I don't I don't know anything about his extracurricular activities I'm not so gonna do that too I have no idea it I don't know don't want to know don't yeah. care not, so it's not my monkey next question <laughs> <laughs> next question uh -uh. <laughs> Next question. What, what what you got, Claudia? Mm -mm. I'm trying to like read the ones that ain't shady, and it's so hard. Yo, every, everybody's shady today. Oh, I love oh, this. Everybody's shady. Damn oh. near. If you don't see anything, just jump in and ask. You know, it, say one of the questions. I I'm trying to find the ones that ain't the music industry. And I do got to give a shout out to Kendrick Lamar because if anybody's a Kendrick fan, you'll know the song he released last week called "Watch the Party Die." Right. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of what we're seeing in a, in, a, in, a, in overall, right? It's like the music industry as we knew it, as it has been, is really coming to an end. It's changing into something. It's 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 we're going into its next, you know, re evolution, yeah. and um, we're seeing the shedding of a lot of bad ha tactics, bad behavior, bad everything. Um, yes. You're seeing smarter artists now. You're seeing the technology catch up. Really, all these labels are turning into tech companies yes. now. They're getting, as you can see, that I got a lot of friends, and, and I don't know if they're watching. I feel bad, but a lot of my friends are being fired right. uh, out of the music business over the last few months. And um, we're really watching from the legal standpoint, from the puff side, from the bad behavior, all the way to the business side. Like we're really watching, like the party die. You know what I'm saying? And uh, um. Now, you look at Kevin Lyles today. I mean, uh, they stepped all on his story today. <laughs> he stepped but, you know, down. He stepped down as, oh, wow. you know, CEO of 300 Entertainment. Look, 300 was given $400 million uh, a few years ago by Atlantic. Young Thug goes through his Rico. That was kind of like their, their standard bearer. 300 had not been the same ever since. Looks like Atlantic won't be able to recoup that 400 million. Right. Maybe. You know, um, Dame, Dame, so Dame Dash, one of the biggest moguls. Well, at one, you you want go ahead, just do do what you want to do right there. <laughs> well, anybody know Claudia? Let her go. Let let her go. I'm saying Dame Dash, who is a uh, his own worst enemy when it comes to his uh, business practice. I think at one point he was positioned to be uh, do great things, but his attitude and his ego got his life. Like, there's a big case that my lawyer won against him representing a movie that we all did where he would defame the lawyer. Like, the lawyer defending the client. You defamed the client and the lawyer. Now you get another case. And now, because of that, you're losing your stake in uh, Rocket Pelle. It's going to be auctioned off. And it keeps getting pushed back because um, people keep coming forward with more more uh, debt that he owes. And it's sad to see. That's another one. Another black man that rose through the ranks got it from the mud out of harlem was a good business mind back in the day but his mouth and antics and ego wouldn't let 
sleeping dogs lot i don't know it just what do y'all think about the the fall of dame dash go ahead mamie i'll let you add this one my cat is talking to me right now cat wants to respond uh i i absolutely think you're correct mm -hmm. um dame has always been a, a very arrogant man i mean back then. i'll say it I, he has like been it. a very, very arrogant for a very long time. <laughs> so, somebody and, put teeth in here. Because his teeth yeah. fell out. Yeah, teeth fell out. Um, but at some point, you have to, you have to understand, like, y your arrogance can get you the, and, I mean, you know, job-wise and everything else. So, can you got to know play? when to... When to shut the f sometimes you got to play devil's win. advocate. Yes. Cause I, I do feel y'all, but I feel like I need Go to bring Somebody said Blue I, need to, I need to bring the black here. man perspective. On Somebody said this. Bluetooth records.